what not to do. Here goes Sam. All right, thanks. Kiss your phone goodbye. Folks, we appreciate you being here. We'll be underway shortly. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. I'll be fine. Don't do it. My son, Sam, got away with it. You can't tell teenagers anything, but Nick did not. Here we have Nick's iPhone 13 Pro Max and Nick's charger. He plugged this iPhone into the seat back USB, just like my son, Sam, did, and it killed his phone. This is way more common than you think, so much so that as soon as I hear somebody say, my phone died and airplane charger, I know exactly what happened. So come along with me and we're gonna try to drill down on what exactly happened to Nick's phone and why you should really think twice before you plug your phone into those airplane seat back chargers. When you plug your phone into the seatback charger, that thing, that seatback charger is not delivering the same kind of clean filtered five volt. Airplanes have a shared power inverter that services lots and lots of seats together. So that means if somebody plugs in their laptop or unplugs their laptop, you can get these voltage spikes that can travel right up your cable and affect your phone. Now, most of these cables, the ones that you get from, let's say, the Apple Store or a quality brand, Anchor, Belkin, the expensive ones, right? The $20 pieces of wire. Those things actually have chips right here in the end that protect your phone. I'm gonna guess that Nix did not. Let's see if we can do a quick little test first to just sort of ask. Let's find out. I've got a special little doohickey here from China, and this thing is a cable reader. All right, we're gonna turn this on and I'm gonna plug in Nick's cable that he used to charge the phone on the plane. Assess, and I hope you guys can see that. Imitation, as expected, Nick's cable is fake, but it looks so authentic, it's white. This is a counterfeit cable. And I've seen customers come to me with cables like that, even when they know hey, I got to get it straight from the Apple store. So I went to Apple on eBay and that's how I got my cable. I even got one myself by going on Amazon for Black Friday and I typed in certified cable, um, lightning certified with a little logo. And what I got was absolute copy fake one. Here's my authentic Apple original cable. At least I hope so. Ooh, Apple original, see that original. Now there's also cables that we use all the time, which are made for iPhone, which means they have the protection chips in them. Those are the ones with the little logo, which is great as long as they're also not counterfeit and lying to you about that logo. I wanna actually show you what these cables look like if we cut them open and check out these mysterious chips that protect your phone. Well used cable from Apple. So I've cut away the plastic on the Apple cable and I can see that there's a metal shielding that's surrounding the cable entirely. So I'm gonna to have to cut through that as well. This is really tough. This is tough to get into. This is well made. I've broken the end off. This was hard to do. And I can actually see the little circuit board with the chips. Let's take a look under there's the epoxy. And it's difficult to even see through this epoxy, but there it is looking through this epoxy we can see that this guy right here, this big square chip, if we look that up, a data sheet that tells us this guy has that over voltage protection, over current protection, reverse polarity protection, and this guy is, is keeping you safe in the event that you plug your phone into this cable into the airplane seat back charger. So now here's our question. What does Nick's cable look like inside if we do this exact same dissection? Okay, I don't think there's that same metal surround, so let's just start trying to peel off this plastic. Now we're starting to get into it, and we're, we're noticing that it doesn't have any of that waterproofing, that epoxy that's completely covering the Apple cable. I feel like my drill I feel like my drill is about the same quality as these cables. <laughs> All right, so there's two 
very, very different boards. And we can see that there's a completely different set of chips. And th these I can't find a data sheet for, but I've seen a lot of these similarly. In fact, one of them, the data sheet said, these are obsolete, don't use anymore. So these cheap cables, the ones that Nick used, they are phone killing cables, especially when you combine them with the variable voltage that you get in your airplane seat back USB port. So don't use those and don't use the ones that are in the airport. Don't use the ones that are in the furniture for the same reason. But how are we going to get Nick's photos? Because he was really, really distraught about this because this vacation photos are all trapped on this phone and it died. And now we have only one, one way to get those photos out. We gotta resurrect the logic board. So let's go ahead and switch gears and see if we can do just a traditional repair video where we figure out, can we resuscitate the logic board? So Nick said that he started by going to Apple and Apple plugged their, his uh, iPhone 13 Pro Max into whatever magic box they have and it just said dead logic board. Now at Apple, they don't do logic board repair at all. So if your problem is on the logic board, then it's game over. Because for them, you're supposed to be backing everything up to the cloud at all times. You should never be in this situation. And so they'll, they'll happily swap your logic board, but your logic board has the chips on it that contain the encrypted data and the chips to decrypt that. So if your logic board is the problem, there's only one way to get that data and that is to fix the board. So let's see, what is it gonna take to fix Nick's logic board? So we're gonna start just by opening the phone. I've already taken off the screen. Let's take a look at it. There's no water in here. There's no reason for this to actually not work. So seems very consistent. This is airplane seat back charger damage. Let's actually look hard at the battery because Nick was saying, I was getting these weird battery messages. So here's the battery itself, and this battery looks perfectly normal. It looks perfectly intact. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong here at the battery or the battery connector. So it sounds like this is probably the fact that the phone's been electrocuted. So our next step is to put this phone on our DC power supply. Okay, so I've plugged in my DC power squid, and I can see that I've got current moving when this should be a zero. So I know there's a problem right away. I'm gonna get my multimeter out to see if we can figure out where this current leak is occurring. Okay, here's the logic board. Let's go back and just check to make sure that we still have that current leak even with nothing plugged into the logic board. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was, I don't know, water in a camera or the charge port itself that was causing that leak and maybe the logic board itself is okay. So let's go back to that and check. All plugged in over here. And we still have a current leak. Actually, let's look at that a little bit closer. This looks a little bit different to me. This is a current leak, but this activity is unusual. It's not just hanging out here at this 200 milliamps. This is very active. This is moving around. This is moving around a lot. You know what? This is what a phone does when it's trying to boot. Definitely what it does when it's trying to boot. I'm gonna reverse course here. I think what's going on with Nix is that the charger damage has made this phone automatically prompt itself to boot. So if you think about it, I'm gonna disconnect this. If you think about it, one of the things that the charger facing chip, the charge IC does, is it responds to you plugging in the cable as another way to turn your iPhone on. So if you turn your iPhone completely off, it's totally off, slide to power off, and you let it sit there just by plugging in the charging cable, it will wake up. You'll see the Apple logo and it'll try to boot. So I think that Nick's phone is actually not necessarily leaking right now. I think that the damage to the charge I see is making it believe that there's a charger plugged in even when it's not, which might mean that if we put a screen on it, we might actually get to see it boot right now on DC power. But even so, we wouldn't be able to extract the data very well because there's definitely damage to the charge I see. So 
just out of curiosity and to be really cautious because I know there's really important photos. Let's see if Nick's phone can actually boot right now if we get out of good screen and stick it on DC power. All right, so here's the screen plugged in. It looks to me like when we connect that DC power that the damage to the charge IC is gonna make this thing automatically prompt to boot without us pressing the power button and without us plugging anything into the charger. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my DC power and we're gonna give that a try. So let's see what happens. I'll bring this right over here for you to see. All right, we're gonna plug that in. And now let's see, do we actually get an Apple logo here? Yes, yeah, see, I knew it. That seems really booty, I guess, that DC power current supply, it seems like it's booting. Now let's see if it's gonna actually boot all the way up, which if it does, I like to be super cautious with data recovery. I might try and keep this phone connected to DC power long enough to get those pictures off by airdrop or some really safe method. Because for us to go after the charge I see, to go after the charge IC and actually fix that inherent problem is pretty invasive. We're gonna have to desolder the layers of the logic board, go find that charge IC, and then replace it just to be able to get the phone to boot up naturally. But let's see. Ah, I knew it. Oh, look at that. Isn't that awesome? That is so cute. That makes me so happy. And now, without showing you guys too much of Nick's data, he did say that we could make this video. I wanna just check to see if I can get those precious photos and videos airdropped to another phone. It's not gonna stay on for more than three minutes without receiving that battery data signal. So let's see if we can get the data and then we can continue on to see whether or not it even makes sense for us to try to change that charge IC. I guess, you know what, because we know that stolen device protection is not enabled, I am gonna go ahead and plug in a known good charge port just to see whether or not, we know that charge IC is damaged because the phone is auto booting plus the cable plus the history, but maybe the charge IC will still let us do data transfer in. Um, out of this device. Grab a known good. Now I wish I hadn't torn up my Apple original cable. <laughs> All right, here's a known good lightning cable. And I'm gonna reconnect my DC power. And notice that it, it hangs out at that 200 for a little bit. It hangs out, it hangs out, it hangs out. So it takes it a little bit for it to believe that we've plugged in a charging cable when of course we never did. All right, let's see if we can get it to boot again, if, it auto, if it's gonna auto boot. It looks like it is, so I see down here my Apple logo. And now let's go ahead and plug in this lightning cable to see if we get lucky and there's enough function left to connect to the computer. I'd be surprised, but you never know. Okay, so nope. So I have connected down here my cable and I've connected to the computer and it does not recognize the computer. So there's not a big surprise, but I'm glad that we ruled that out. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can airdrop some of these pictures before we do anything that would be really in, in, a really invasive or aggressive or risky to the logic board itself um, in order to actually go after replacing both or either the charge IC and the port controller chip. Those are the two charger facing chips that are really getting punched by that unfiltered airplane voltage. Let's see if we can get those photos off because we may not need to have to do something so invasive and I don't wanna do that because it's a surgery and anything can happen until we know these pictures are safe. Nick, I noticed that you didn't put your phone in airplane mode. That's okay, neither did I. Do they even ask you to put it in airplane mode anymore? Sending, it says. 
Yay! All right, and so here we have those photos are starting to come through. Awesome, so that's gonna take a long time, but I think it's a really safe way. I know these pictures are super, super important to this family. So I think I'm gonna end this video here and I'm going to make sure that we get all of those photos transferred in three minute blocks so that they're definitely, definitely, definitely safe. And then I'm going to talk to them and find out what's happening to this phone. Because if we get all of these photos and videos off with this safe method, then I'm not fixing that phone for Apple because they're going to take it back to the Apple store and give it to somebody else. And I think that's really uncool you know, because this is all bad design uh, by itself. Yep, it's rebooting. Okay, so we, we have a path to data. So yay, this is so great for this family. I'm going to be able to pull these photos and videos off in three minute blocks uh, through AirDrop. And that is going to be a super safe way to make sure that they get all of this data. Um, and then I'm going to talk to them to kind of see what they want to have happen with the phone itself. To make this phone functional again, we would have to desolder the two halves of the logic board locate the charge IC and replace it, and then replace and locate and replace the port controller IC as well. These are both subject to those charger fluctuations. Now we would then have to get out our multimeter and start to measure around to see if there are other affected circuitry. There's a little resistor there that can sometimes get burned. It's kind of like getting struck by lightning. So this phone really has been struck by lightning in a, in a way and uh, to actually repair the phone for use long term that's a pretty big order of business there's going to have to be replacement of a lot of pieces and bits on the logic board plus they're probably going to need a new charge port plus resoldering those layers together so that is why this job is here for data recovery only now how did this happen this is a hundred percent plugging the phone into those seat back chargers combined with using one of these one of these imitation cables how to know whether or not your cable is fake or not you know with the USB C this is lightning but with USB C you know there there isn't a good magic way to plug it in and have it tell you anything about the cable so one thing you can kind of let price be your guide, the higher end name brand cables from trusted manufacturers that you buy in their store. You know, that's probably a good option. At iPad Rehab, we have a trusted cable maker, which is Zutby, and I'll provide a link at the top of this video. So we, uh, we have looked at their cables and we think those are good guys. They go to China and they have these cables made. So that's what we use here in the shop. That's what we recommend for our students. And we will also sell them through iPad Rehab. And other than that, just know that those airplane charging little charger bricks, you are way better off to bring an external charging brick and plug your cable into that because that external charging DC, DC straight up current is not going to be susceptible to those kind of fluctuations. So if I'm on a long haul, you know, transatlantic flight, I would rather use my charger to charge up one of those external bricks. And if it kills it, who cares? And then use the, an external brick, one of those portable batteries to charge my actual phone. So that's my pro tip as a traveler. Um, I hope that you guys share this video because this is really important content and I'm surprised that it's still happening, but it is. I've got over there two iPhone 16 Pros that have the exact same thing wrong with them. So charger damage is here to stay even with the USB-C phones. So that's about all I have on this and great news for Nick. You and your family are going to get back on your phone. Here's what not to do. Here we go with Sam. All right, thanks. Here's your phone goodbye. Folks, we appreciate you being here. We'll be underway shortly. Welcome aboard. Flight attendants, please arm doors for departure and cross check. Verify it's a bad idea. Don't do it. I'll be fine. Don't do it. Ta-da. Oh, doesn't work, does it? It does work. <laughs>